How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf. And uh, today I just want to kind of do, it's not really a proper review of this forklift or anything, but I just wanted to go out, get some gameplay of it, get kind of a basic feel for it because I've not really had many excuses to use it uh, recently. So I did use it on one thing. There was a, a mission in the same yard where you do the cargo crafting mission. There was one called manual loading and uh, yeah, you basically had to pick some fuel barrels up like right there, uh, move them about 10 foot, put them on the dock. That mission in itself, by the way, is a bit bugged because uh, when you load them onto the dock, nothing happens. You have to go back to the mission square where you accept the mission. And when you click on that, it brings up like a cargo menu and then you can drop the barrels off and it will say mission completed. So yeah, it was a, a bit long and drawn out and all you had to really do, like I said, was lift some barrels, drive 10 foot. And that was about it. So uh, yeah, this was kind of just driving around a few of the different maps and uh, seeing how things go. Like, as I was driving it around yesterday and testing things out, there's a couple of issues with it. And uh, in the end, like... That's why I'm not quite doing a full review yet. As somebody said in the comments as well, like um, they've apparently said they're going to fix the forklift, like the way it operates and everything, because it does feel, it just, I don't know, it's not really natural at the minute. It all feels like opposite to what you assume it is. And um, yeah, it's a bit clunky, a bit long and drawn out. So hopefully they patch that pretty soon. And then the other issue is that, as you can see now, or about now it will be, uh, when I'm going up through the gears, or in, uh, like I can go to fifth out of fifth gear, it gets up to 4th just fine, and then as soon as it jumps up to 5th, it just drops itself back down to 1st, and you pretty much stop dead, and you have to start again. I can press L1, and automatically, like, when it jumps up to 5th, I can jump it back down to 4th, but it pretty much immediately tries to jump back to 5th, and then do the same thing, jump to 1st, and start all over again. And, uh, yeah, it's not really just worth perpetually clicking L1. Like, they sort of need to fix it, but... In the end, I went to go and test it on a few other maps because, uh, as people have been saying, and I fully agree, on this flooded foothills map, I'm not. I believe it is to a degree on uh, the Big Salmon Peak as well. But if I'm honest, I've not really been on that a whole lot other than I've attempted a mission. Uh, yeah, I was stuck in snow for a lot of it anyway, so it, it didn't really give me much of a hint. But um, this flooded foothills, for whatever reason, seems to have some like extra terrain resistance on top of like all the base maps at least anyway it feels like Mandarin Lake Covd had it with a super snow light obviously now in this we've got the super mud um yeah not what I was worrying was is this thing just going to handle like this all the time where it's just constantly trying to jump back down but um in the end I went to try it on some of the maps and uh yeah I think it was like back to normal really it is just more this map so the other, other cool thing is uh you don't have to have the forks on it you can remove them you've got two options like there's wide forks or just the normal ones and um yeah i mean when i was driving around i have to say to its credit the off-road potential of it is pretty bloody good i mean it's not going to be up there with like the top off-roading trucks and all the rest of it but considering what it is i thought it just you know you'd touch anything other than a pavement and it'd absolutely stop dead um whereas gearbox issue aside it actually digs in pretty well. The tyres are pretty decent. I assume they're muds, but they might be some like custom um, tyre just for this that have got their own custom stats, so they might not sit where all the other muds do. Um, yeah, as you can see again, though, it just keeps doing that thing where it jumps into fifth, back down to fair. So at that point, I uh, gave up on there. I have headed over to Black River. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd give it a go on there. You can see with the steering, it's pretty damn good steering, if I'm honest. A little bit too good for my... Uh, like, and I'd almost probably rather it was just two-wheel steer, like maybe the rears instead of all of them. But again, that's not really a criticism. It's just, for me personally, it's felt a little bit... Sometimes you can almost do a 180, like, <laughs> accidentally. Um, yeah, it's a little bit keen. It's funny, it's kind of on the opposite end of the scale to that Cat 770G that they added, because that thing is incredibly slow for steering, and it also does that, like, it feeds the opposite steering in before it goes the way you want it to go. And, uh, yeah, this thing's kind of the opposite. It's all wheel steer and uh, it gets a little bit <laughs> a little bit violent as you can see though well when we get off the uh, pavement going through this sort of mud section it's staying in fifth gear a hell of a lot better a lot more smoothly more natural how you'd expect it to act and this mud going along here it's not the worst but it's it is worse than it probably looks because it doesn't really look like it deforms a lot but i've drove a hell of a lot of vehicles down here it's part of the review videos i do and all sorts and uh, yeah, some of them, especially with trailers and stuff, can get knocked out of high range just going down that bit. So overall, it is uh, motoring along pretty nicely once this extra terrain bollocks has uh, been removed from the equation. <laughs> As you can see, though, steering is uh, pretty goddamn keen. I nearly ended up facing the way I just came, but uh, yeah, 
just about hung on in there. Like, it will possibly jump up and down the gears a little bit as I'm going now, but again, like, I'm going down a muddier section. This gets a lot muddier. It still feels pretty normal on this map. And, uh, yeah, apologies if I repeat anything when I'm saying it. I just genuinely recorded this whole thing, went to press back up to uh, load it up, and then I got blue screened on Share Factory on the PS4, and it said an error has occurred, and it just deleted my whole bloody thing. All the editing, all the voice, <laughs> everything. So, uh, yeah, not too impressed, but we're giving it another go. See, even along here, though, that field is pretty trollish, and that, especially the fact that you bounce up and down, that catches quite a lot of trucks out and slows them down. This thing did actually motor along, funnily enough, when it seemed to go better through that field <laughs> than cutting across here. Not too keen on fences either, but well, uh, I'll bear that in mind. Went to ram a tree, I mean, I had a little to zero <laughs> hope that it was ever going to work, but you got to know these things. So uh, next, I'm just giving the forks a little test, and uh, yeah, it's not got enough oomph to it, or not enough weight, say, to lift that. But overall, I think that's a good result, because I'd rather the forklift itself has some, like, decent weight to it, instead of just being, like, the weight of paper like some of the trucks in this game um so yeah it wasn't able to lift that one it's like it lifts its own back end first it can lift all sort of like it can lift the loaf uh, it can lift the don 71 all like the little scouts and stuff i have yet to be able to lift a uh, truck maybe i'll try with something like the step toe i think that's one of the lightest trucks there is i would have thought well if you discount the uh, like the warthog and the tatters they might be pretty light as well and um, yeah so i'm going to go for a little trek across Black River, like I said, just a bit more mud where it's actually, the gearbox can just behave naturally and do what it wants to do. I'm going to go on ahead to one of the warehouses as well and uh, grab a bit of cargo and uh, yeah, kind of have a little dabble with the uh, forklift controls. See again, the steering just back there is a little bit twitchy, but you see it's places like this where I absolutely thought it would just stop dead practically in there, barely go half a mile an hour, I'd be winching it and all sorts. This is pretty bloody respectable going through there. I mean, again, it's still not like the Dolphin and um, trucks like that can go through that section in high gear, so they are still on top of the uh, food chain. But yeah, that thing got through there bloody well. I didn't expect anything like that kind of uh, effort from it, so pretty happy as far as that goes. And uh, yeah, once the gearbox is left to do what it wants to do, it's, uh, it's not too bad. A little bit sluggish climbing up there, but nothing too special. Maybe if there was like one more engine on top it would be pretty cool but yeah cutting all through here I mean that's like I said I think that's pretty respectable and I've got the forks on at the minute which I assume add a bit of weight I've not actually checked if I'm honest to see uh, if it like reduces the power to weight ratio or anything like that but like I said I will do a proper review on this but I suppose the two main things I'm waiting for, fingers crossed, is, uh, yeah, one that they sort that... Well, again, it's not really a gearbox issue. I wish they'd sort that stuff out on their flooded foothills. And then, uh, yeah, just the general operation of the forks. If they got both them sorted. But either way, if they take too long or whatever, I mean, it's one of them. They took bloody ages releasing this update. So if it's going to be like a weeks or a month or something until they're going to update the crane controls on this thing, then I'll just do the review. Yeah, in the next few days to a week max or something, but I'll give them a little bit of time. Maybe we can uh, get something changed. Um, yeah, I mean, all things considered, got through that little rough mud patch as well. Nearly there now at the warehouse. Again with the uh, twitchy steering. As far as top speed goes, I mean, it's not knocking it out of the park or anything, but again, for a forklift, I wasn't really expecting miracles. I wasn't... I wasn't expecting a rally forklift as much as I uh, I wouldn't say no. So uh, yeah, go and grab a bit of cargo. It's quite nice going back on here and just able to grab whatever cargo you want. <laughs> Throw it, release it into the wild and go and grab more cargo. Although I've already noticed on flooded foothills, I've already scavenged some of the uh, little sections. But yeah, I'm just generally going to just keep going to the places that have unlimited amounts of cargo at them because trying to remember like oh can I still get stuff from this place and that yeah it's all a little bit a little bit of a faff so I mean this is the main issue I would say with the forklift as far as its purpose as a forklift goes I've now got to line it up you've got to kind of click into the menu click triangle click triangle oh sorry click on it click triangle go into the crane or uh, forklift menu line it all up then I've got to double click back out of this menu and then I can drive it forward a bit and then if I'm slightly off or wrong or whatever, I've now got to go back to the, uh, the forklift menu, adjust the forks a tiny bit. 
but then now I've got to go back out to drive forward and I mean I think I may end up oh no I did go out I could have started trying to extend the forks but whichever way you uh, cut it you can't drive while you do it I mean they just need some kind of simpl simplified thing where well now if they just had the crane menu as it is but I'm allowed to use my um, throttle and reverse that would be pretty cool that would solve a lot of the issues because most of the time you can stay out of the forklift menu but for those little times where you are actually grabbing stuff yeah that would be uh, pretty cool if not just make it something like while you're in driving mode you can press say left and right and up and down on the d-pad and adjust just the basics of like the height of the forks and the angle of the forks just so you don't have to keep jumping back and forth from uh, yeah menu to menu because like I said it's just a bit long and drawn out a little bit clunky it doesn't really feel very smooth or natural and possibly as well I admit some cargoes it's just a uh, slip right in <laughs> that's definitely what she said um, but other ones like this I mean as you can see I'm having to jiggle and wiggle and kind of uh, yeah eventually just keep flooring at it at least this thing has got pretty decent grip and fairly good weight for what it is so it was pretty planted while I was trying to uh, ram them forks underneath there and um, yeah I was able to pick up the fuel barrels the other day when I did that manual loading mission and it picked them up just fine but uh, because the mission was a bit bugged I ended up getting two lots of fuel barrels so after I delivered them I still had one lot of fuel barrels left and I was just driving around in the yard messing around with them they ended up flipping sideways off my forks and they landed upside down and once they landed upside down I wasn't able to drive under them like I just could not get the forks under it it was just pushing it all around the yard I rammed it into a tree and a wall and all sorts and it was just bouncing my forks off but whatever angle I did I couldn't seem to get underneath them so there, there's obviously a little gap um, when they're facing the right way but yeah it'd be nice if they could possibly just up that gap a tiny little bit and then put one on what is essentially like the roof of the cargo as well so even if you do flip it upside down and as far as you can see now it's not insane for weight I mean this met these metal beams are fairly heavy but as you'll see in a minute from the steering yeah I've barely got any weight on the rear end so it's doing some like weird kind of sideways Michael Jackson dancing going on it nearly jiggled around then and uh, went up onto its front wheels again I was steering there I apologize for the little glitch but it was kind of crabbing along sideways but it wasn't really digging the front wheels in and actually turning that's why I'm sort of retracting the uh, forks in a bit now which again it's not really any major criticism or anything it's just things I've noticed it's one of those trucks where to be honest it's pretty cool and fun for five minutes sort of thing and I'm not knocking it because as I said it's off-road capability is actually surprisingly bloody good um, but long term it's just not one of those things I'm really going to use a lot I can't tow trailers with it like I said the crane uh, the forklift sorry is a bit fiddly one thing I think would be quite cool if they did if they added like a winch point or even better that it operated like a crane point kind of in the middle between the forks because especially at the minute that the menu is so clunky if you could just winch you know to the cargo lift your forks higher up and lift the cargo up that way it'd be pretty cool as like a slightly simplified workaround until they eventually uh, adjust them yeah as far as delivering stuff goes or lifting cargo and all the rest of it I mean I didn't really get too far into the mud and it kind of bounced around and everything flipped the cargo off I suppose it'd be quite handy if you were able to pack the cargo or something or just yeah maybe not fully pack it but I don't know kind of again you could just press left on the d-pad or something and it kind of locks it a little bit better onto the forks maybe again it's not something I'm really going to be uh, picking cargo up and rallying off-road and trying to deliver it to a truck that's pretty far away it's one of them where you'll have to park this in the yard really and kind of do it that way you pull your trucks up pretty close so you've only got a flat pavement to drive around on and uh, when I lowered the forks by the way into the mud you could see it kept pinging mud out the floor it was kind of a little bit bugged in but um yeah drove along again it rolled off so it is what it is this was just a quick little go uh, this was after yesterday's mission I believe or maybe the one before where I ended up drowning the forklift in the water as far as the water situation goes again it ain't really gonna bother me because it's not something I'm gonna go on some serious treks with but I do wish it was a slight bit higher with the water not loads, I appreciate it's a forklift, not some like mad off-roader, but it is also a game and we've been given it on this flooded foothills to mess around on and uh, yeah, they, you kind of fenced off by a lot of the rivers and that, but again, it's it's pretty inconsequential because I'm, uh, I'm not going to be going mad with it. 
its ability though to climb over rocks and stuff is doing pretty bloody good then. Put a, a fair amount of trucks to shame as far as that one goes. And it's not got very good ground clearance either, which I don't really expect with it, but all things considered, it actually felt pretty, I'd say, fairly realistic and balanced as far as that goes with like its grip and its ability to go through off-roading and over rocks. It was uh, pretty cool. Just a quick one to show you. I jumped back to uh, Imandra quick because I was curious when I've been saying about these increased uh, resistance stats kind of thing. It seems to be the DLC maps that have that. Like this Imandra you see there, it's already going like up into 5th and dropping down to 1st. I believe like quite a few of us said it when Lake Cobden and Imandra come out that there was super snow. Obviously now on um, flooded foothills and I assume Big Salmon Peak. It's basically super snow and super mud. Once I get past that section and it's kind of just firmer terrain, it ticks along pretty nicely. Better than it was anyway, but yeah, it's a bit of a troll. If you want to just enjoy the thing as it nature intended, so to speak, I'd uh, go and drive on the base maps. And then I didn't really drive here to do that specifically, I was just going for a little cruise round, but it got through that ice pretty goddamn well, to be honest. Again, a lot better than I expected. A little bit stuck on the way out, but all things considered, that, uh, yeah, did pretty bloody well. Can't really knock it for that. Oh no. Speak to me, loaf. Don't let it end like this. You see, go and check on him. He's just goddamn professional. He might be on his dick, but it don't matter. He's the loaf king. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today. I mean, get yourself a loaf. Don't worry about the forklift, never mind that. Get yourself lots and lots of loafs. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll be back soon. See? Goddamn horse for the vehicle.